All right. If we look at capacitors now, they are typically going to be in a circuit somewhere. And we're going to deal with a lot more with circuits in the next chapter. So, but in this case, we're going to deal with only capacitors. We'll see we have resistors later on and possibly inductors and things of a sort. But with just capacitors, the way this works, so you have to understand what we mean when we say capacitors lined up in series or in parallel. We'll see the same thing with other circuit elements later on. In series mean they're in the same circuit, uh, the same line of the circuit. Any current that flows through this circuit that passes through this one has to pass through this one. There's no other possible route for it to go. Whereas when they're set up in parallel, and again, your two equivalent lines, that stands for like the parallel plates of a capacitor. But when you have one little one big, that's your voltage source, your power source. So your battery in this case. And so in this case, my battery, the current leaving the battery here has an option. It could go through this pathway or it could go through this pathway. And so this pathway and this pathway both start here and end here, but they're alternate pathways. And we'd say that any elements in those alternate pathways are hooked up in parallel. So my mom talks about when she was a little kid, and this says something about one, how old my mom was, but also how poor she was at the time. So their family had nine lights in the house and they were hooked up in parallel. And so the electricity passes through the tungsten filament and the light bulb of one, and then passes through the tungsten filament and the light of another. And if one of those light bulbs goes out, it breaks the circuit. So that's like the old Christmas lights. And the old Christmas lights, old school Christmas lights, if any one light goes out, the whole strand's gone. So it breaks the circuit. And so they got smart, and now all the new Christmas lights and stuff like that, and now your houses as well, they're all wired in parallel. That way, if any one circuit element goes out, there's still an alternate pathway for the current to go through. So kind of smart. <laughs> so I'm kind of surprised my mom lived in a house where that wasn't the case. But if you had nine light bulbs and one went out, did you know which one? No, you just start sequentially switching them out until you find the right one. Yeah, so cool. Now, technically, light bulbs function as resistors, not capacitors. So, but the same kind of what's in series and what's in parallel still applies. So in this case, it turns out for objects that are in series, they have the same current passing through them. For objects that are in, then in parallel, they have the same potential difference across them, same voltage across them. So in this top example, the same current that would pass through one would pass through the other. Well, it turns out these currents that pass through only pass through while it's either charging or discharging. So, but once you get a buildup of charge, notice in this case, current flows through and I'd get a buildup of positive charges on this end. What would I get built up on the other side? So, and negative charges on the other side because the positive charges were leaving and those positive charges ended up on this plate, <laughs> which then caused charges to leave here and leave negative charges on this plate. And so it turns out when you have two capacitors in series, they're gonna have the same charge buildup. Even if they have different capacitances, they'll have the same charge buildup because the charge buildup that's on this one causes the charge buildup on the next one in the chain. So positive charges build up here, causing positive charges the same number to leave and go on the next one. And so the charge buildup on two capacitors in series is exactly the same. So principle to take home. Cool. And it turns out if you want to add their capacitances, they add as reciprocals. Pain in the butt. Cool. If you have two capacitors in parallel, then the voltage, it turns out the voltage, there's a voltage drop across passer. The voltage drop across this one and the voltage drop across this one would be exactly the same voltage drop, but they wouldn't necessarily have to have the same charge build up on either one. So, I mean, technically, if they have the same voltage drop and the same capacitance, what I'll call capacitance equals Q over V. So if the capacitance is the same and the voltage drop is the same, well, then the Qs would be the same. But if these are different capacitors with different capacitance values, then they're gonna have different charges building up on them. Cool. So what's nice though, is that to get their equivalent capacitance between these two. So it turns out you can kind of make this a simpler diagram and just view these as one combined capacitor in both cases. And to calculate what that equivalent capacitance would be, you just simply add them together when they're in parallel. So a little nicer situation. So if we look, at something like this. Let's just say I have a two farad and a four farad capacitor here. 
what would be the equivalent capacitance? I could look at this as if it were a circuit with a single capacitor, and what would be the equivalent capacitance of that single capacitor? Six. Simply six farads. Now, typically, you're probably going to more likely see microfarads and nanofarads. I just picked a nice, simple mathematical example here. Cool. If we saw the same thing up here and we had a two farad and a four farad capacitor. So in this case, I could envision this as being a single circuit with a single capacitor and the equivalent resistance is not such an easy calculation. So in this case, I'm going to say one over the equivalent resistance equals one over two plus one over four. And adding fractions sucks. You got to get a common denominator and all that stuff. And so this would be one over two comes one, two over four plus one over four is three over four. And if one over the equivalent resistance is three over four, then what is the equivalent resistance equal to? Four over three farads. Great. How fun is that? Turns out, give you a little trick. You'll use this again with resistors later on, but if all you have is two capacitors, if you're adding them as reciprocals, the whole process of finding a common denominator, what's the easiest common denominator to get between two and four? Well, what's the lowest common denominator you can get? Four. But what, regardless of what these two numbers are, what common denominator could you always find very quickly, even if this was like 33 and 27? Five. Just multiplying them together will always give you a common denominator. It may not be the lowest one, but it's e the easiest one to find with um, you know, crazy numbers. And so I could get these to be a common denominator of eight. What would I multiply this guy by to get there? Four. What would I multiply this guy by to get there? Two. And so it turns out if all you're adding is two capacitors as reciprocals like this, because they're in series, Quick way to actually do this is to say that the equivalent resistance is equal to C1 times C2 over C1 plus C2. And it turns out it's just taking advantage of how we add, when we add reciprocals and get a common denominator and stuff like that, as long as we provided the common denominator was two and four. So in this case, I do two times four and get eight over two plus four, six, and eight over six reduces down to four over three. Great. Only works if you have two. It wouldn't work if you had three or four or some other number of capacitors in series. Only works when you have two. Cool. All right. This is how capacitors work when we add them in series, when we add them in parallel. And it leads to lovely diagrams like the one in question number six. So let's look at this lovely thing. Three microfarads. So the question you've got with this diagram is calculate this, the charge stored on every single one of these capacitors. So what we're going to do is start simplifying this diagram down. And so in this case, if you've got parallel pathways here, you're going to combine them first. So in this case, these two parallel capacitors, what would be the equivalent resistance? Yeah. So that's the easy part. So I can make a new diagram here that simply has two capacitors in it now. The equivalent resistance of this combination is six microfarads. And the equivalent capacitance of this combination is 12 microfarads. Cool. And then I could take this and make it even simpler by combining these into a single equivalent resistance or equivalent capacitance. And what would be the value of that equivalent capacitance? 72 over 18. Yes. So 6 times 12 is 72. Over 6 plus 12 is 18. And 72 over 18 is exactly 4. Cool. And now that we've got this all the way down to one equivalent capacitance, then we'll work our way backwards here. So we'll start down here, and we'll say that since C equals Q over V, then Q equals C times V. And so in this case, the charge built up on this imaginary combined capacitor here would be 4 times 10 to the negative 6 farads times 12 volts. And what do we get here? Yeah, so since these are in series, right? Yeah. 
How do you add capacitors in series? As reciprocals. And, and if you recall, since there's only two of them, I use my shortcut, right? Where I just did C1 times C2 over C1 plus C2. And so I did six times 12, which is 72, over six plus 12, which is 18, and 72 over 18 is exactly four. Cool, so that's where that came from. Not a problem. So here, what would be the amount of charge stored on this imaginary capacitor? Four point eight times ten to the minus five. What? Joules. That's energy. This is charge. Oh, coulombs. Yeah, coulombs. Sweet. So four point eight times ten to the minus five coulombs. So now let's work this backwards. So going back to the last diagram, how are these two capacitors related? They're in series. They're in series. Not how they're added, but how they're related. They're in series. And what's true when we have two capacitors in series. Same current while it's flowing, which leads to the same charge buildup on, this, on both. And so it turns out this Q we figured out right down here, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs, is the charge total on both of these as well. And so here, Q is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs. And here it's also 4.8 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs. Okay, but even these, these aren't real resist or real capacitors. They're imaginary. They're combined still a combination of even more capacitors. So if we look here, these two capacitors combined have what total charge buildup between the two? Well, not, not what total capacitance, but what total charge builds up on this one and this one added together? Times 5. And the total charge built up on this one and this one added together also adds up to 4.8 times 10 minus 5. And so essentially you could say that Q of this and Q of this adds up to that. Q of this and Q of this adds up to that. Cool, but how do we figure out what that is? So if you look at what we got going on here, like let's just say we have the top set here. If we say Q1 plus Q2 adds up to 4.8 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs. I got one equation so far, how many unknowns? Two. two, if I got two unknowns, how many equations do I need? I need two. Now what's the same? Uh, so in this case, which one of these has a higher capacitance? The left one. And so he's got a higher capacitance. Which one has a higher potential across it? It's a trick question. The same, they're in parallel, the voltage difference or the potential difference is exactly the same. So if they have the same potential difference but one has a higher capacitance, what is that gonna mean about the charge stored on the one with the higher capacitance? Well, it's just gonna be bigger, I don't know. In this case, you're right, it would be double. So in this case, if the V is the same, but how much bigger is the capacitance here? How many times bigger is the capacitance here than here? Double, and if the capacitance is double and the voltage is the same, what's the charge? Double as well. So if we look here, I know that Q1 and Q2 add up to that, but that this one's gonna store twice as much charge. So it's a two to one ratio. So we could actually solve this differently. What they really tell you to do when they're first teaching you this is they want you to see that the V is the same. What's V equal to if you rearrange this? No, but I mean, if you rearrange the equation, what would V be equal to? Yeah, Q over C. And what they really want you to say is that since the V's are equal, since V1 equals V2, then they want you to say that Q1 over C1 equals Q2 over C2. And there's your second equation. Now you have two equations and two unknowns and life sucks. <laughs> but I'm not telling you to do it that way at all. Since we just realized they have the same V, then look at the ratio of the capacitances and then we often give you nice round numbers. So in this case, it's a two to one ratio, right? So this should have double as much capacitance. With a two to one ratio, what I need to do is break up the total Q into three parts. I'll give two parts to him and one part to him. That way the two to one ratio is there. So in this case, I know that this guy is gonna get two thirds of that total charge, two thirds of 4.8 times 10 to the minus five coulombs. What is two thirds of that number? Three point two times ten to the negative five coulombs. 
And so he gets two thirds of it. That way, this guy gets one third of it. And what does that come down to? Uh, 1.6 times 10 to Is this double this? Yes. Yeah. So it is a two to one ratio. Do they add up to 4.8 times 10 to 5? Yeah, great. Life is good. Help me out on this one then. Three to one ratio. So in this case, I need to break up my total charge again into how many parts? Four parts. This guy will get three parts, this guy gets one part. Or simply we'll say that three fourths of it he gets, and one fourth of it he gets for grand totals of how much? So what is three fourths of that number? 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs and 1 fourth? 1.2 Good, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. And now we found the charge buildup on all four capacitors. Cool. Kind of a process. So you got to take advantage of some things you know, like when you get the equivalent capacitance here, if it splits up into two in series, then they both get that charge buildup. So, and then that since these have the same voltage, so whichever one has the higher capacitance will get the higher charge buildup. Do you think our professors will always make the ratios that easy? Will the professors always make the ratios that easy? No, not necessarily. So what if I gave you a ratio like this? Like that? You like that? Yeah. So in this case, this guy is going to get 2.1 out of a total of 3.3. That's his fraction of the charge times the total. And this guy would get 1.2 out of 3.3 times the total charge. And so even if you don't get nice numbers, I mean, you can still come up with the fractions. It's not as nice and easy to say and stuff, but yep. Perfect. Questions. This is a pain in the butt. It takes some getting used to, but next chapter is all about this.